Hello, and welcome to Talk FAS, the program where we connect with members of the SFU Applied Sciences community. I'm really excited today because all the way from France, we have Dr. Angelica Lim joining us. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. So, Angelica, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you've been up to since you graduated from SFU? Sure. Um, well, I am from Vancouver. I grew up there. Um, I went to SFU uh, and did computer science. I um, graduated in 2008. Uh, I did a minor in French as well, which kind of explains the me being in France thing, uh, partly at least. Yeah. Um, and since I graduated from computer science at, uh, at SFU, um, I moved to Japan for my grad studies. So I spent five years there um, kind of fulfilling my dream, like traveling the world and doing research in robotics for my master's and for my PhD. And so, um, and since I finished that, um, I decided to um, join a company to do robotics, not just in research, but in, uh, in industry. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, I guess that might be a question that you'll ask me later on. But uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the long and short of what I've been up to since then, at least. So yeah, you're doing some really cool stuff. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the work that you're, that you're doing now? Sure. Um, I'm a software engineer at a company called Alda Baron. We make um, humanoid robots. So it's a company that builds uh, not only the hardware, so the you know the the head, the body, the all of the hardware of the robots. We have two robots, one called Pepper and one called Now. And um, I'm working on the software part. So all of the um, the AI, you know, the AI, the applications, the software layer that allows the robot to perceive the world and interact with humans. So it's it's cool. It's it's like getting you know you get to work and I turn on my computer and then I turn on my robot. You know it's the working on this new kind of technology and new interface for um, uh, after you know computers and mobile phones. So it's pretty exciting. It's kind of doing something that uh, that's really new. The thing I find so interesting reading your blog and watching your TED talks um, is this really interesting intersection of computing science and engineering, but also human psychology and human emotion and things like humor and dancing. Um, <laughs> it's such an interesting thing that you're doing. Is there any particular project or area of research you're working on that you find um, really interesting these days? Yeah, so um, when I was at SFU, I took some classes. I did uh, like third year artificial intelligence. Um, we did, uh, I had Dr. Richard Vaughn, um, I attended some of his grad courses in robotics there and I was really lucky that was really one of the, the, the starting points that kickstarted, that kickstarted me into my career in robotics. I'm really grateful to him for that. Um, and so now on the artificial intelligence side, a lot of people think of robots as the opposite of emotions. You know, like if you play a music, if you play um, something robotically, then it's like without emotion, right? So I think, so this is the field I'm working on, is the idea of bringing emotions to robots. Um, you might have seen the movie Her, like last yeah. year or a couple of years ago. And I think uh, over there, you, it's already, you know, it's not out yet here in France, but the Disney movie Big Hero 6, I think it's called in English, it's a Disney movie about a robot that also I think is emotionally intelligent. Um, so this is what we're building right now. It's a robot that is able to kind of communicate not just by words, which is really what we do when we text and we, mm -hmm. we send emails. You know, there's a lot of um, stuff that can get lost in translation when you just do text. But when we communicate, we're using gestures, we're using our voice, we're using our face, and all these things that just get lost in di the digital things we do today. So um, one of the exciting things right now is using robots as a way to express using all of these facets. Um, and also understand more than what we just say, but like how we say it and what is the real meaning behind it. It seems like such an interesting time to be working in robotics and machine learning and AI. Um, when you look at kind of that industry, what trends, what things are you really excited about as you look towards the future? Yeah, so um, there's so many things to be excited about. One of the things is robot cars, which I think are so cool because I want to have my car drive around for me. <laughs> be, you know, that's kind of flying cars or, you know, at least in the meantime, robot cars. Um, 
uh, as for um, other things, you know, now that we have the internet, it's just, I know that sounds stupid, you know, I mean, now that we have the internet, but, you know, when I was a kid, we didn't have the internet. And, um, uh, you know, having all of this data and information around the world will allow us to train our, you know, our, our machine learning algorithms um, more robustly. So that's, uh, you know, something that's going to be huge and is already becoming huge. Um, and in terms of having uh, a robot, I think that this interface is something new as well. So, like, um, uh, I'll give you an example. So, not only can the robots connect to the internet, but they can connect to other other devices. So, one of the uses we have for our humanoid robot is that it's our interface. Um, like, let's say we have a Roomba, or we have our other digitally connected devices around the home. The robot could be, if you say, "Hey, now," so you say, "Hey, robot, um, can you clean the house before I get back?" And he'd be like, "Oh, got it," you know. And yep. it would, it, since it can talk to its friends, it could actually do all these things and control the room, it control all these things to, to do it for you. And hopefully this is a more natural interface for people to communicate with than, you know, the blinking lights, the buttons that we are so used to. But, you know, we can go back to being more human. So talking to you, you're clearly really passionate about this subject. Mm -hmm. I'd love to know, going all the way back to, I guess, 2004 when you started at SFU, why did you choose really that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why did you pick computing science um, to study in the first place? Um, yeah, so it was kind of by luck. I mean, I I didn't know how to program before I got to SFU. Um, I, one of the really silly reasons I picked computer science was because I thought it was. I thought I could type fast, and I thought, okay, that's, you know, like all those hacker movies, I thought I could type fast, so yeah, I'll be good at computers, never, never. Um, but one of the other reasons was I like languages, so I love learning languages, um, like French and stuff, and what I thought was, it would be kind of like learning the language of the computer, you know, how can I talk and communicate with the computer, and, and it turned out to be this really, uh, really cool language to learn, and so... You know, it turned out that way, and, and I didn't really follow the typical, like, you know, learn how to program at home and then get through this. So it was thanks to the SFU program that I um, learned to love it. That's so interesting that you talk about wanting to communicate, and I think, you know, it's so important to highlight people like you that are truly doing something creative and very innovative, but also people focused and with such an emphasis on communication, um, I think that can be a little bit misunderstood about where a computing science degree can take you. Um, if anyone's watching and they're considering doing computing science or a career in robotics, what would you say to them? Well, I would say, so first of all, computing science, robotics of course has different paths in there. You can do mechanical engineering, you can do um, uh, other kinds of engineering, I guess, so, com and computer science for the software part. Um, you know, and there's also different kinds of computer science. You can make the OS of a robot, you can work on the artificial intelligence of the robot, you can work at the application level. There's lots of um, possibilities there. Um, but I guess for me, I got some really good advice when I was in second year in computing science because when you just start out and you're just learning how to program, it's, and it's not necessarily clear like where it's going. You might be making applications that are really good for learning exercises, you know. I think we had something about making banking software or something, you know. Like it's, and for me at the time, I was like, where is this going? You know, it's not really what I want to do, making this kind of software. But then an upper, like someone in third year, her name was Amy, she told me, um, just wait, there, just wait. Like in third year and fourth year, the classes get really cool. And that's where you learn to apply what you learn in first and second year. So that's what I would say, like if, if you try out a couple programming languages and you're like, oh, where is this going? Third and fourth year have some really cool classes where you can learn to apply what you, you know, the, basically like if you learn how to speak French, the fun part is actually, you know, chatting with friends and learning, you know, the culture and stuff after it, right? So just getting past that hurdle um, to, to get to the fun stuff. So while you were an SFU student, you were incredibly involved. You were, I believe, president of the Women in Computing Science um, organization and president of the Computing Science Student Society as well? 
Yeah, just for a semester, I think, each or something. But yeah, it was it was really fun. <laughs> we did lots of cool stuff. And as a student leader and someone who, you know, did well academically, you received some awards while you were at SFU. What did it mean to you to get that support um, as a student? Yeah, it was really amazing. Um, like, first of all, on a personal level, you know, it builds your confidence, right? I mean, it's, it's not always easy um, to... I didn't have like amazing stellar grades. I had okay grades, you know, and so you're always kind of thinking, you know, do I belong? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? But then getting an award like that's, you know, a, a com computer science award or something, then you're like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe I do belong. And you know, even if you don't get the awards, you know, there's these little things and p things people say along the way that I really think, you know, think about how we, you know. Um, I hope that these sort of things encourage uh, other people like it encouraged me. So that's one thing. On the second hand, it was actually really practical because uh, on my CV, um, I applied to some internships. We had co-op there, which was already really great for, um, for getting uh, into my grad school and other jobs. But uh, I had an internship at Google as well in California. And in trying to get that interview, I'm I'm almost positive that having just a, like a little extra thing like you know uh, an award is it, it just gets your it, ma it makes your resume stand out so I really appreciate um, what the department did there because yeah that got me on the road to where I am today. Yeah, we're so lucky in the faculty to have um, generous donors. A lot of them are alumni uh, who give to help support our students. So anyone who's watching who's contributed to an award or to any student project as of you, um, from me and from Angela, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> so I want to say I've seen your TED Talk. It is amazing. Um, it's funny and it's informative and we're going to link to it below and I'd really encourage everyone watching to check it out. It is one of um, the better TED Talks you'll see and it's a great way to um, spend a couple minutes and you get to see one of Angelica's robots which um, I won't spoil it but is a very cool moment in the talk. Um, mm -hmm. If our viewers want to learn a little bit more about you and your work, where should they go? Um, you can well, for me and my work, I guess, you can go to my website. Um, it used to be on an academic server, but now I, now it's just uh, angelicalim.com. It's so narcissistic. No, but uh, you can go there and you can see all the papers as well that um, we've written because at Kyoto University, where I did most of my research on robotics and emotions, um, there's uh, plenty of articles there that, you know, if you're more into the research part and the machine learning part, you can read those a particular article, and that might be informative. Um, otherwise, uh, my current work itself, uh, if you Google uh, Pepper, Pepper Robot, probably, or Aldebaran, um, might, you might be able to find out more about this particular robot. It's, it's really cool. This is really the reason why I moved to France, because there's nothing like it in the world. Um, I worked on it in Japan when I was there as well, because that's where it's coming out first. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at some of the articles and look at some of the videos because it's it's pretty mind blowing. You have this robot that's able to converse with you and make you laugh. Like it's it's amazing. It's really fun. I feel like I'm living in the future. So have fun. That's so <laughs> wonderful. Well, we'll be sure to link to more information about Pepper and about Angelica down below. Um, thank you so much to our guest, Dr. Angelica Lim, um, for taking some time from her busy schedule in France to talk to us today. And please do tune in for future episodes of Talk Faz. Coming up in the future, we will be connecting with SFU alum Gary Morrison from California. He has some tips and tricks about how to perfect your resume and your job interview skills to land your dream job. Um, he should know what he's talking about. He interviews hundreds of people where he works at Twitter. Um, if you have ideas or suggestions of who you would like to see on Talk Faz, you can drop us a line. We'll put some contact information down below or connect with us on Twitter at FAS underscore SFU and feel free to use the hashtag, hashtag Talk Faz. This has been another episode of Talk Faz. Rory Green signing out, wishing everyone a wonderful rest of your week.